If you're looking for a new and delicious way to prepare a chicken or a turkey this Thanksgiving, we've got official Mass Appeal chef Greg Manette. He's here to show us how to make a delicious beer brine roasted chicken or turkey. Greg, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks, Seth. Glad to be back. So a lot of people complain that their turkey or their chicken is too dry. So exactly. this helps to make it a little bit wet. Exactly. I think that's the consummate uh, response to most family uh, turkey dinners, chicken dinners. Yeah, a great company, great right. appetizers, but the chicken was dry. Yeah. Well, this, this basically makes it almost foolproof. Okay. I mean, nothing's foolproof. No, but, uh, no, no, no. Especially not when I'm cooking. The process is brining. And uh, what we're trying to do really is just uh, kind of naturally inject moisture into the, into the chicken. And we use salt to do that through osmosis. It draws out a lot of the moisture, but then replaces it with whatever seasoned uh, liquid that we're going to use. Today, really? we're, today we're using beer and, uh, and water That's and up. a little bit of citrus and some herbs. Um, a little bit of salt and brown sugar, of course. And, uh, but, you know, a lot of times at home, I'll do uh, white wine, which is uh, really nice. Um, and, you know, really, you can, you know, there's a variety of ingredients. You can use cider mm -hmm. uh, as well to give it uh, some sweetness. That would lend itself well to, like, a pork loin or something. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So, basically, you put the salt in it to draw out the liquid so that it can be replaced with the liquid that you really want to put in there. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Well, you, you just want flavor, you know, and that's that's all we're trying to do is flavor, but also keep the moisture content up with uh, the high temperatures that, you know, it experiences in the oven. So, Gotcha. So how do we get started? Well, any brining uh, requires uh, approximately, I think it's a 5% solution, uh, and that's that involves the salt. So for every, half, for every gallon of water, it's usually like a half a cup of salt. And gotcha. so what we're doing here is it's approximately three quarters of a gallon of uh, water mm -hmm. and a quart of, uh, of beer. And uh, of course, we at the restaurant we use BBC beer. It's a great beer. This is uh, this is an ale, so it's not too overpowering. Okay. If, if I was doing something like a pork loin again, I could use a uh, like a stout or a porter. Okay. And so one thing too is, uh, like, you know, we're gonna have salt. Um, it's gonna be a little salty. So what we're gonna try and do is is cut out some of that that saltiness. And so you're cutting it with brown sugar. A little bit of brown sugar. Okay. And then we're gonna add a little bit of citrus as well. You can stir that actually. I'd love to. And uh, this is; these are all cold ingredients. Uh, a lot of times, people will uh, will heat up the the liquid so that they can dissolve the salt better and uh -huh. uh, and the sugar. A little bit but, of orange, uh, but it really isn't necessary. And it's also actually safer because what we're going to do is submerge the uh, the cold chicken into the cold liquid, mm -hmm. and so there's no uh, there's no opportunity really. And it's immediately going to go into the fridge, so there's no opportunity for bacteria to grow. That's good, yeah. Because you don't—that's the thing—you don't, thing, don't want to get stuff hot and then cold and put it in the fridge and out of the fridge. Exactly, exactly. It's those in-between uh, temperatures that that cause all the problems. So now, what are we doing over? What's next? Well, once uh, sugar and salt have been dissolved, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be perfect so long as it's in there. We're going to add some herbs, again, rosemary, thyme, kind of the old old standbys. That and, and uh, you use all the fresh herbs at Chandler's, I bet. Of course. Do you have an herb garden at home, Greg? Uh, I did. I did until uh, until a frost. Until the over. winter hit. Yeah. I need to bring mine inside. Every year I say I'm going to, but I never do. Yeah. No. Same way. Same way. Not enough time, really. Oh. <laughs> so this is this I'm is gonna it. I'm going to stop before it gets a little too messy. You know, this is our brining solution, and again, it's five percent because we added half a cup mm -hmm. to uh, to a gallon of the liquid. And if you're someone who wants to cut down on your salt, it. It's, that's not what this is about. You need that amount of salt to make it work. You, and generally, you do. Um, if you use less salt, you could brine it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, it would still impart a really nice flavor. It would still be juicy if you cut out even half the salt. Um, but you know, for just since we're just going to roast it immediately uh -huh. once it's done, I have a little bit too much liquid there. But one that's thing, all right. you just want it submerged. So normally, what we would do at the restaurant is we turn it over. Because okay. the back of the chicken doesn't have any meat on it. The breasts now are completely submerged in the water, so are the legs. And, uh, and we would wrap that tightly with plastic wrap, put it in the refrigerator. Uh, generally, I'd say at least eight hours, no more than 24 hours. All right. Well, Greg, thanks so much. So the next step, we're going to let this chill for a little bit, and then we're going to show the finished product later in the show. Exactly. Well, next, next step, we're really just going to show... You know the the process of roasting after it's taken out of the brine and, and remove the chicken that we, we threw in there earlier so well greg stick around if you don't mind all right and you stick around too because we're going to be back a little bit later in the show to finish this up appeal and we are back in the kitchen with official mass appeal chef greg manette and we're going to finish up the recipe for beer brine roast chicken or turkey greg thanks Seth, for sticking around nice to see you so take us through what we did we brined it the first time we did 
We brine this basically for, uh, you want to brine it for about 8 to 24 hours. Okay. Uh, really no longer than that because it, it just gets too salty. Oh. Uh, so what I did was uh, for, you know, for TV time or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the magic of television. Exactly. We prepared one earlier. It brined overnight. Um, it's now in the oven. It's mm -hmm. about ready to come out. But I wanted to show really the, the next process in, uh, in preparing any chicken or turkey before it goes in the oven. Mm -hmm. um, and just a way that, that, that I like to do it. Uh, I'm incorporating really some of the ingredients that were in the brine itself, mainly the, the herbs uh, and the citrus, uh, and filling the cavity of the chicken with that before I start roasting it. So are we going to put all this right inside the turkey? Well, I don't think all of it's going to fit because this is a small little bird. Yeah. I don't want to torture it any more than it has to. don't overstuff that bird. But I basically took a, took a, uh, an orange, a little carrot, celery, onion. Uh, pretty much a lot of things you had in the brine earlier. Exactly. Now what's this serve to do? Just keep it a little bit more moist? I'm sorry? What's this serve to do? It keeps it a little bit more moist and does it well, increase this, the flavor too? It, in, the, in the roasting process, what, what this is going to do is, and what you would do afterwards too, is if you were to make a pan gravy, you would take all the ingredients out of the cavity. Uh, oh. And you would basically mix it in uh, with uh, the, the natural juices that, that form in the pan. Um, and you're really, you're just kind of uh, making a stock within the pan. So while the juices run out of here, they're being seasoned by the carrot, the celery, and onion, which are your aromatic uh, vegetables, uh -huh. some herbs, and also the citrus. And, uh, and you can baste your, uh, your chicken or turkey with those juices as it roasts. So we've brined the chicken, we've taken it out of the brine. We then did. since we've stuffed the bird, we are, we're in the process of stuffing the bird. One thing I wanted to, to show people is, you know, a lot of times people will trust a, a turkey or a chicken. Um, a lot of times it's it's nice, it's for show. Uh, but in in this uh, in this in this regard, basically, what we're trying to do is keep the meat kind of compacted so it all cooks evenly throughout. So in lieu of uh, like uh, kitchen twine, you know, or uh, butcher's twine. What I'm basically going to do is just cut a couple slits. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. In and the then skin. You do you tuck in the legs? And I'm going to take, you know, run the legs across each other. Oh, that's pretty smart. And pop them through the, pop them through the skin there. And this one I can probably just tuck right underneath. That's great. So yeah, it's good presentation and it keeps everything in there safe. Yep. Well, Greg, thank you so much. And so we're going to check back in a little bit and we're going to sample the finished product. How's that sound? Sure. Perfect. All right. Thanks. Hey, part of cooking segments, it's tasting time. We are back in the kitchen with official Mass Appeal chef Greg Manette to finish up a recipe for a beer brined chicken or turkey. Greg, thanks for sticking around. Thank you. This bird looks great. Doesn't it? Oh, so good. So take everybody <laughs> through the process at home. If they missed it, we brined the chicken. Exactly. We, we stuffed the we chicken. We brined it overnight. We uh, stuffed it. Um, and, we, and then, of course, we roasted it. And it looks good. And this is a great way to keep your chicken moist because as we were saying, you know, your Thanksgiving parties, people complain that the chicken's a little dry. The yep. Chicken or turkey will never be dry if you beer brown. I, I think it's worth just that little bit of extra effort uh, to, to really make it perfect. And, um, and again, it doesn't have to be chicken. It can be turkey. Mm -hmm. um, in the recipe that uh, we have posted online, it's, I think it's up to a 10, 12 pound turkey for the ratios there. Also, if you need to add more liquid for a bigger bird, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, again, I think it's a half a, uh, half a cup of salt. Uh, to every uh, gallon of water that you add to it. But if people can do simple math, they can do this. Right, of course. Well, of course. shall we dig in? Oh, definitely. Well, one thing too, it's like we can show people how to carve a chicken, especially for a, a buffet, mm -hmm. uh, if you're gonna do that at home. Um, one thing you can basically, the center of the breast. So just cut right down the middle. You can feel where the breastbone is. Uh, then follow, follow that breastbone. You kind of know the shape of a chicken breast, so Basically, follow what you follow what you know follow there. You know, yeah, we've eaten hundreds and hundreds of chicken breasts. Yep. And what I'm going to do is just easily cut through the bone there. What I'm going to do is take a big old bite. And then we'll just we'll separate the breast first, and we'll just pull that right out. All right. You mind cutting me off a piece with your knife? Not at all. Cut off two pieces, Greg. I think you should have some too. You worked really hard today. All right. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you. Let's see. But you can. I don't know if you can mm. see with the camera. It is, it's really nice and moist. Really moist. Well, Greg, thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here. If you've never dined at Chandler's Restaurant, you are missing out. You've seen some of the menu items on our show, but head to South Deerfield to check them out for yourself. Be sure to like their Facebook page. Just search for Chandler's Restaurant and check out the page for the latest up-to-date information. Chandler's is located at 25 Greenfield Road in South Deerfield. It's just a short drive. Take exit 24 off of I-91 North and you can call them at 413-665-1277 to make your reservation today.